All right, now I'm putting the second half. I've, I'm doing the exact same thing I did on the other side to put the back half of the clay onto the candle holder. And I'm pressing it on with my thumbs, just like I did before with the plastic wrap. The only thing is, I don't want to push down real hard where it overlaps on the edges. Um, because I want to be able to trim away the excess and peel it off like that. There's a tiny gap there, but I can work that out with my thumbs with the, uh, the plastic wrap. I will trim this. Put the plastic wrap back on here to smooth the seams. If the seam shows a little bit, don't worry because we're going to do a little bit of embellishment that will help cover it. But get it looking as good as you can without spending a terrible lot of time. Um, all right, that ought to do it. We have clay on both sides of our candle holder. There's a, a dent right here, which I can fix. And now if you wanted to stop here, you could. But uh, I don't think that we want to. I think we want to do a little bit more decoration on it. Pull the edges up to the very top of the candle holder, up to the very edge of the glass. And run your blade around the edge to trim it off nice and neat. All right, now it's completely covered. And now that the candle holder is all covered with clay, we're going to do a little embellishment on it. This is a small rubber stamp in a, with a Chinese character on it. And I'm going to go in here with on the where the seam was. This is black permanent stamp pad ink. And I'll just do a nice round black stamp there to kind of reinforce our Asian theme. I'll do one on each side so that it's in between the two, the two dragons, one on each side. All right, there's our stamping. Doesn't that look nice? So what I have here is some variegated uh, leaf, foil leaf. This happens to be nice red gold pattern. It's really pretty. But you don't have to have this. You could use plain gold, you could use silver, whatever you like. I'm going to take this, I'm just going to tear off a small piece of it, and if you've ever worked with this, you know it's very, very thin and it goes all over the place. So turn off your ceiling fan, don't work on it outdoors. Now what I'm going to do is press it down with my fingers and pull it back up again. It's not wanting to stick very well because there's a lot of cornstarch on there, but it'll stick if I push it hard enough. I just want little scraps of it here and there, little scraps. And concentrating more on the upper fourth, I'd say, of the design than on the lower portion. Because these are our flames. If you cover part of your dragon a little bit, don't worry too much about that. This foil is sticking to my fingers like crazy, but that's okay, better than flying around the room. I have a little clay shaper here. I'm going to use my clay shaper to push down the edges of that of that foil a little bit, try and get it to adhere somewhat better to the clay. If I make dents in the clay, I'll just go back and use my uh, plastic wrap again. But what I'd like to do is break that foil up a little bit, break it up so that it doesn't look like little chunks. It looks more like flecks of fire, little flecks of metal. I don't want the big chunky effect that I've got going on right now. So I just break it up on the surface of the clay with my clay shaper. And then I'll go back to the plastic. This will make it stick down good and it will also eliminate any fingerprints you may have uh, introduced into it by putting that foil on. Let's give it a good rubbing with the, with the plastic wrap. Peel the plastic wrap off and we're ready to make the foot, the foot of our votive holder. I'm going to do that with plain black clay. 
This is not translucent, it's just regular black. And I've rolled out a chunky snake and I'm going to roll a skinny snake out of it. It's raining outside, can you hear the rain? I'm using an acrylic sheet to roll this snake. You could also uh, use an extruder if you have one. But honestly, I think for doing something like this, it's probably just about as easy to do it this way. By the time you get out the extruder and clean it if you need to and load the clay into it, find the right die, uh, you'll be done. So, all right, here's a good size piece. Turn my piece over. I'm going to put this around the edge on the edge of where the green clay meets the bare glass. Cut it off at the seam. Now it doesn't look very round. I'll turn it over and get this shape better. Here's my favorite way of doing a good, uh, a good joint on the end of this. Um, a nice seam that won't open up. Take a small amount, very small amount, of liquid clay and a bone folder and work a little bit of the clay over the seam, a little bit of the liquid clay over the seam with your bone folder and it'll be very nice and smooth and when you bake it, it will open back up again. Okay, there's the first ring we've got. Now we're going to take a smaller snake, a skinnier one, than the first one to make the ring on top of that ring. And I can do the same thing to make a seam on the end of this ring. Take the bone folder, very carefully, I'm going to flatten it a little bit, that's all right. Now, work it out. I can fix it. Okay. Now we have two black rings around the bottom. Here I have some Fimo bronze, antique bronze Fimo pulver. You could use Perlex powder or perfect pearls, whatever you have. You can use pretty much anything, but I want to take this black clay and give it a little bit of a gold or antique metal look to it. I'm just going to rub it around there with, with a, uh, this is a sponge that I've cut in half just to give me a little bit more control. Because I want to try to avoid getting the metal onto the green clay, I want to keep it on the black. And at this point, we can take our piece, put it on a tile, and you're ready to cure. There it is. Give you a good look at it. It's ready to go in the oven. My votive boulder has now come out of the oven. It's all baked. It looks wonderful. And I want to put a little something on it to preserve it because we have that metal pulver on it and the paint and the uh, ink and you know the markers so we want to make sure it stays the way it looks now so what i have here is liquitex matte varnish it's made for liquitex uh, acrylic painting but it works very well as a varnish on polymer clay and and it has almost no gloss to it and for this project i think a matte finish looks better and i'm just going to squeeze a little directly onto my holder here Take one of my cosmetic sponges and rub it around. Now when that dries, that's the end of our project and we're all finished. And you can give these as gifts, you can use them yourself, uh, you can sell them at craft fairs. Just uh, enjoy it and try different variations, try different kinds of stencils, different kinds of inks. Um, if this is just intended to give you some ideas. Thanks a lot. Bye.